What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitchy Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Kyle Freeland, who had these nasty sliders and knuckle curves. He went six innings, giving up two runs, and had five strikeouts. Grayson Rodriguez went four and a third innings, giving up five runs, and had six Ks. But those numbers really didn't do his outing justice. His fastball went at 98 and 99 miles an hour. He had this bowel-locking breaking ball, as well as a nasty changeup and slider. He's a young pitcher making his home debut, and what I look for is stuff, and his stuff is nasty. Mitch Keller had seven Ks in six innings, giving up two runs. He had this mean cutter and upper 90s fastball, a good solid outing for Keller. Ryan Weathers had this ankle-breaking changeup. Ouch. Do polar bears have ankles? Well, they don't anymore. And he faced off against David Peterson, who had six Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up two runs, thanks to his fastballs and slider. Lance Lynn struggled early in his outing. You can see that frustration here as he yells out, God damn it, after getting a K. Although, honestly, he yells profanity for good stuff and bad stuff, so it's hard to tell. But then he put it all together, painted with his fastball, got this curveball, yells out, let's go, and finished with 10 Ks in six innings with no walks, but did give up three runs. He was up against Pablo Lopez, who was really good. Lopez went seven and two-thirds innings with 10 strikeouts, giving up two runs. And look at this filthy change-up movement he was getting. That arm side movement is nasty. His fastball was up to 95 miles an hour and even worked in this vicious sweeper. Here's an overlay of his sweeper and changeup, and you can see how much ground those pitches cover. It's a big part of the reason he had 10 Ks. The pitches start out looking the same, and then hitters, if they start their swing, have to cover a ton of ground. Jesus Lizardo had this overpowering fastball ranging from 97 to 99 miles an hour. He finished with 5 Ks in 6 innings, giving up 3 runs, and had this great K strut too. You gotta let your inner Jesus lizard do its thing. He faced off against Aaron Nola, who went 5 and 2 thirds innings, giving up 4 earned runs, and had 6 Ks. He had his curveballs, cutters, and painted with this 95 mile an hour fastball. Garrett Cole wasn't his normal dominant self. He only had 3 Ks in 7 innings, giving up 2 runs, but... He did have these 97 mile an hour fastballs, including this one that was absolutely painted. Alex Wood had five Ks in four and two thirds innings, giving up only one hit and no runs. And he had this wicked slider that got the sword. And look at this home plate view and you can see what Betts was dealing with here. He was up against Dustin May, who wasn't quite as sharp as he was last outing, walking four and only getting three Ks in five and a third innings. But he did have this curveball 3,366 RPMs. And you can see what that spin does to that movement of the pitch. Merrill Kelly had a nasty cutter and curveball working. He had seven Ks in six innings, giving up only one hit, but he did give up three runs. He also carried a no-hitter fairly deep into the game. He was up against Corbin Burns, who looked like Corbin Burns. He put his other starts behind him and went eight innings, giving up only three hits, no runs, and had eight strikeouts. He relied on these change-ups, his curveball, and of course, one of my favorite pitches, his backdoor cutter. Hopefully, Burns' struggles are all behind him, and he returns to being that ace that we all know he is. Jordan Lyles had four Ks in six and a third innings and had this beautiful 80-mile-an-hour sweeper, and he faced off against Jacob deGrom, who was outstanding again with nine Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs, and had no walks. DeGrom had this incredible 93-mile-an-hour slider. Look at that movement. 93-mile-an-hour pitches shouldn't move like that. And, of course, had his 100-mile-an-hour fastballs, including this painted 100-mile-an-hour fastball, and touched 101 this game. But also of note, check out these change-ups from Jacob DeGrom. They are filthy. DeGoat usually doesn't throw many change-ups because they're not as perfect as every other pitch in his arsenal, but these were DeGrom-like totally up to his standards. And here's an overlay of DeGrom's 100-mile-an-hour fastball with a 90-mile-an-hour slider, and you could see why you would swing at that 90-mile-an-hour slider out of the zone. 
he disguises his pitches so well by tunneling them that by the time you can differentiate them, it's too late. Josiah Gray had this cutter and painted changeup versus Shohei Otani. And he faced off against Shohei Otani, who was on the bump. And man, did Shohei put on a show. Otani had six Ks in seven innings, give up only one hit. He did have five walks, but it's hard to control pitches when they move so much. His sweepers were moving up to 20 inches and looked like absolute Frisbees. And he threw 51 sweepers this game. And no wonder he did. His sweeper is rated as the best pitch in baseball in terms of runs allowed. If you still don't know what a sweeper is, check out my video on sweepers that dropped yesterday. Otani also whipped out a curveball out of nowhere, and his 75-mile-an-hour curveball was absolutely gorgeous. Here's an overlay of Otani's 92-mile-an-hour sinker with an 84-mile-an-hour sweeper. You can see how those pitches look the same, but end up on different sides of the plate. Hitting against Otani is a pure guess, and he has so many different pitches that you're constantly guessing. Otani's ERA this season is now .47, and he's only given up six hits in 19 innings this year. That's 2.8 hits per nine and an ERA plus of 9.93, which leads the league. He also broke the Angels' record with 10 consecutive starts of two runs or fewer, breaking Nolan Ryan's record for the Angels. And of course, he hits too and reached base for the 11th time this year and the 34th straight time going back to last year. Absolutely ridiculous. Garrett Whitlock had this Expelliarmus slider, and he faced off against yesterday's pitcher of the day, Shane McClanahan, who had 9 Ks in 5 innings, giving up only one run on two hits. McClanahan's stuff is devastating. Not only does he paint with 99-mile-an-hour fastballs and throws 100, but his secondary stuff is ridiculous. I mean, check out this three-pitch K. This is totally not fair. You're waiting for the dude to throw 100, and you get that stuff? And he really put on a change-up clinic yesterday. Check out these change-ups. Just total UFO movement. In fact, this one ran 19 inches. It starts on the plate and ends up way in the other batter's box. And McClanahan also has a hammer curveball and got a K on that. McClanahan's changeup grip looks a little like a splitter, but he still calls it a changeup. Here's Shane talking about his changeup grip. And, uh, he's like, ride that, ride that seam and just kind of feel it come off your finger. I'm like, all right. And I threw it and he goes, throw that again. And um, I threw it again. He was like, that's it right there. And, uh, you know, just try to keep refining it and trusting it. And, you know, ultimately it became what it became. If I want a little more run, I'll try and like kind of like, maybe not pronate as much like maybe I'm not thinking that to get depth. I'm thinking just maybe more like a fastball to get that effect where it goes off. It's probably my favorite pitch to throw, to be honest with you. Another big part of why McClanahan is so dominant is his mechanics. Look at him. It's almost like he leaps at the hitter. A little Edwin Diaz ish. I asked McClanahan about this little leap and this is what he told me. Well, to me, truthfully, all it feels like I'm doing is just pushing off the mound. Like, it, to me, it, it just feels natural. I just, you know, once that knee gets to the max knee height, just drive down the mound. Like, you know, me and Snyder have a lot of, not a lot, but a couple of cues really helps me focus, you know, downstream and, uh, you know, be directional. Like, have everything going towards home plate. No, no, no wasted movement left, right. And, uh, you know, so once that, once that, that knee gets to the max leg or max knee height, just drive down the mound. And it, it, to be honest with you, I, I see it. I'm like, man, am I jumping? But it, to me, it doesn't feel that way. It just feels like I'm pushing. Now one of my filthiest relievers, Camilo Duvall had this fastball and slider. Ryan Helsley had this elevated 101 mile an hour fastball that looked like it kept rising. That's what that thin Colorado air will do to you. Zach Pop had these crazy two seamers. Look at that amazing movement. Keenan Middleton caved the side with this filth. Steven Wilson had these sweepers. Tyler Rogers had some rising sliders and got a K on a slider. And here's his fastball from a home plate view. You can see how low his release point is. And again, that fastball's weird because it actually drops more than his slider does. Speaking of dropping, Ryan Stanek had this absolutely wicked splitter. And my filthiest reliever of the day was Yuan Duran, 
with this 101 mile an hour splinker. Yes, that's 101 mile an hour off speed pitch. And here you can see the grip on that. It's called a splinker because his fingers aren't spread quite as far apart as on a usual splitter. It's really a cross between a splitter and a sinker and can get ridiculous movement. Even through a couple of other 100 mile an hour splinkers this game and his fastball topped out at 103. And to really see the movement of that splinker, here it is overlaid with a 103 mile an hour fastball. So you see these pitches coming at you at 101 and 103 miles an hour, and you have to guess, is it gonna be a splinker that drops below your bat or a fastball that stays above it? Every hit against Duran is a miracle. And don't forget, he also has this absolute hammer curveball. Look how fast that thing drops at 89 miles an hour. He's just a lab-created pitcher. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. It's Shohei getting a foreign substance check, but the umpires apparently forgot that Shohei keeps his pitch calm under his arm. So they wanted to check because they thought that he kept going there to get sticky stuff. Instead, he was just calling his pitches. Leave Shohei alone. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm gonna start out with Sonny Gray for 5Ks or more, then take Zach Wheeler for 6Ks or more, and top it off with Hunter Green for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?